So for the past six months, I've been working as a seasonal ecological field surveyor. My job is to travel all around the UK, checking on the welfare of animals before or after building has taken place. This video will hopefully give you a little bit of an insight into what I do for my job, and you'll get to see some of the cool wildlife along the way. I work with five main animals, which are badgers, bats, mice, newts, and snakes. And we're gonna start off with the badgers. My name's Adam, and welcome to NatureScope. So let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and why I'm here. So the ecologists have identified eight badger sets that they think are still active. This means that they believe there may be badgers coming in and out of the set. So what they've done is they've set up trap cameras. These are cameras that if anything walks in front of them, they start recording for 10 seconds and can be left out for weeks or even months. My job is to come along and check these cameras, see what footage we find. Of course, I'm mainly looking for badgers, but it's really cool to see the other things we see. I usually see a lot of mice, a lot of rabbits, some foxes if I'm lucky, I've even seen hedgehogs. So. Come along with me, let's take a look at what we find. Hopefully we see some cool stuff and I can definitely guarantee you we'll see some badgers. So as you can see here, this is an example of one of the cameras and this camera is looking down on these two large badger sets that we think might be active. So what happens is when something walks in front of this camera over here, the camera will switch itself on and record for 10 seconds and we can see hopefully what's either going in or out of the badger sets or what's just passing by. So this is another one of the trap cameras that's looking down on another quite big badger set that we think might be active. This camera, as you may be able to see, is extremely close to the other camera. So now it's time to check the footage on these two cameras. Let's see what we found. I'll show you the footage right now. So as you saw, we got some really cool videos of those rabbits, those mice, those birds, but also those badgers. To see badgers actually out and about in their natural habitat doing what they're meant to be doing, it's just amazing to see and it's really rewarding when you're checking the camera footage. There's also another form of badger sampling, which I'll show you now. I haven't got much footage of it, but I can explain it with voiceover. These are one-way badger gates. So basically, when we need badgers to move, perhaps there's building nearby or perhaps even on top of the sets, we put these one-way gates in so the badgers can leave, but they can't get back in. This encourages them to move to a new safe location. We put sticks and string in front of the gate as an indicator to see if badgers have left the sets. Wouldn't be a week in the life of video without talking about how much driving I do on a weekly basis. I'd say at least 50% of my working day is spent driving and there's some fairly long drives involved. So before applying to any field ecology roles, you have to think, can you cope with the driving? Is your car reliable enough? All that sort of stuff. You also have to consider that when you drive somewhere, you're likely gonna be seeing something cool. You're gonna be seeing some snakes, some bats, some badgers, mice, whatever it is, something that you're not usually gonna see in your own house. Anyway, I'm about to leave for a bat survey and there's two types of bat surveys that we do. We do what's known as bat activity surveys in which the office gives us a path to walk around. We follow it and we use our detectors to look for any bats. We then record the direction and their behavior. And there's also static surveys. Static surveys are where we sit or stand in one point looking at a building or some trees trying to spot the exact location which bats fly in or out of. Due to bats being nocturnal these surveys happen throughout the night so you could be up until 12am doing an evening survey and then up again at 2am to do a morning survey before sunrise. It's pretty long hours but it's really cool to see the bats so let's head on over to site and I'll show you a bit more about these bat surveys. As I said previously, my job tonight is pretty simple. I'm doing a bat activity. My bat detector's there, and that connects with some software on my iPad, which shows when bats are calling and the frequency that they call at. This data is then sent to the ecologists, and they can use it to determine what species of bat it is and what direction they're flying. I record their behavior and the direction they're flying in. But for the most part, I just walk around this field, waiting for my detector to pick up some bats. So 
what you've just seen me do there is set up a static bat detector. So these are big bat detectors with huge batteries in. Then we attach the microphones to a tree and they stay there for weeks. We get a lot more bat data from them than we do the iPads. This is a little bit of footage of me doing a static bat survey. Now it literally is just sitting or standing in one spot for a few hours, spotting bats emerge or re-enter a building. Now the bats could emerge from anywhere, but you're looking for little gaps. So I'm focusing on that gap between the window and the wall, the gap between the guttering and the roof. They're really obvious spots where a bat could come out of. You're also looking for loose roof tiles, so you can see one big gap there. A lot of them are slightly loose where bats could easily crawl in and out of. I'm also looking at the window on the side. As you can see, it's a broken window, so that could easily fly in and out of there. So this you can see here is a dormice nesting tube. And effectively, what it is, is a rectangular bit of cardboard with some wood in it. Now that sounds really simple, but what this does when attached to these trees, as you can see, is about a meter and a half off the ground. It encourages little mice to come in and nest inside them. Now the main species of mice we're after is dormice, as they're protected here in the UK. However, we get other species of mice nesting in them quite regularly. Now, unfortunately, I've only ever done one of these surveys. They're quite rare. But what we do is we put them out at regular intervals and number them. The reason we number them is so that if we find dormice in them, the office can work out the rough area the dormice are living and put the plans in place to protect them. So what we do is we simply pull it out. And unfortunately, nothing in here. But we look for any mice or any evidence of mice, ID them, and then send it back to the office. I'm currently in the hotel waiting to do my reptile check tomorrow, which I'll explain about in a little bit, but I first wanted to talk to you about the work we do with Great Crested Newts. Now there's three types of newts in the UK, the smooth newts, palmate newts, and great crested newts, and they're all protected, as is every British animal, but the great crested newt has some extra protection because of falling populations. If someone comes along and decides they want to build on a piece of land that has water in it, we come along and check for newts and move them to a new safe location before building's begun. We'll then monitor the newt populations in their new location for multiple years afterwards. Now unfortunately I don't have footage of me checking on their populations afterwards, as when I decided to film the video it was a little bit after newt season, which is kind of between March and June, but I'll explain how that works. Basically what we do is we get these empty plastic bottles and we put a stick straight through them. We then put them in regular intervals around the body of water. Then what happens is overnight when newts come out of the water, they'll find these plastic bottles and think they're a cave and they'll use the entrance of the bottle to crawl inside. We then come along before it gets too hot, identify and release the newts. This gives us a rough idea of how many newts are in each pond and how the populations are doing. I'll have hopefully put some pictures on screen which will help explain this a little bit more. Now I've got some footage of me collecting the animals and moving them to a new safe location. Now when we do this, understandably it's not just newts that we find. We also find frogs and toads, basically anything you'd expect to find in a pond. So let's take a look at the footage right now. Today I'm doing what's known as a translocation. This is basically the movement of animals from an area that in this case is going to be built on to a designated safe zone. Now what's happening here is basically these sort of small fences have been erected and buckets have been placed around the outside. Now what we're looking for inside these buckets is any animals that work their way to the edges of these little fences and basically are trying to escape. They fall into the buckets and we move them to a safe zone. So imagine a big noughts and crosses grid this is basically what this is. There's buckets around each section and we're trying to get all the animals out, get them to a safe place as they're planning on building on this site very soon. So the kind of theory is that when the weather's right, the animals move from wherever they're hiding in the centre in this kind of long grass area outwards to try and go feed or hunt or whatever it is. 
and they fall into these buckets and then we collect them, move them to the safe zone. Newt. Yes. Cool little guy. Must be so scared. But it's okay. We're gonna move him. Let's get him in the bucket. And carry on. Look at the size of that frog. Oh, let's get him out. Huge. So now it's time to release the animals. What I've done with the newts is every newt, I've taken them out and I've put them somewhere individual, somewhere that's a bit safer, maybe next to a pile of logs, next to a tree, somewhere that they're less likely to get seen. Frogs, on the other hand, I'll just release them to some long grass because they have that kind of capability to move a lot quicker. Yeah, like I say, I've released the newts, but let's get rid of these frogs and toads. So the final thing I wanted to show you is a reptile survey. Now these are pretty simple. So what we do is we cut a briefing felt into 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter squares, number them and place them in regular intervals like you saw with the dormice tubes earlier. Reptiles are cold blooded. So as the sun heats up these squares of roofing felt, reptiles will crawl underneath in an attempt to warm themselves up. We then come along and check what's underneath these tiles and it gives us a rough idea of what's in the area and how abundant the species are. And the main two things we're looking for are lizards and snakes. There's four species of snake here in the UK. There's slow worms, which are technically legless lizards. There's grass snakes, which as the name suggests, prefer tall grass. There's adders, which are the UK's only venomous snake, but prefer woodland areas usually. And then there's the smooth snake, which are so rare, I don't know anyone who's ever seen one. Lizard-wise, we usually only see the common lizard, but they're really cool to see. You can grow up to kind of about that big. So let's head over to site and see what I find. So here we have a slow worm underneath this, Tim. They're technically lizards, um, just with no legs. They're really beautiful animals, small, can grow up to about a me half a metre, roughly. But really, really cool animals. Really calm too, usually. Yeah, not quite what we're looking for, but still really cool to see, a little toad. Just chilling under one of the tons. Awesome to see. This is a smooth newt in its terrestrial phase. It's not uncommon to find them underneath tins, as after their breeding season, they'll come out of the ponds and look for somewhere to stay over winter that's safe. Weirdly, it's really common to find rodents on reptile chicks. We find mice, voles and shrews pretty much every single time we go out. They're really cool to see and they make little nests underneath the tins. I was also lucky enough to see in what my opinion is one of the coolest animals in the UK. This is an adder and it's the first adder I'd ever seen. We also have these metal tins which are designed to be a little more sturdy but also they're designed for adders as well. Obviously adders are the poisonous snake so this gives us one a little more protection also heats up a bit more and protects the adder too. So it was a really successful reptile check. It was really cool to see all the animals and the adder at the end was amazing. So I hope you enjoyed that little insight into my job. If you've got any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have two or three seconds spare, please like the video. It helps us out more than you could imagine. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe. We've got lots more really interesting stuff coming very soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.